When you think of terrorism, do you think of Canada? Yeah, probably not. Maybe you should. Hi, this is Phil Gursky, President and CEO of Borealis Threat and Risk Consulting in Russell, Canada. And you're listening to Quick Hits. <laughs> if you were to ask the average person, Canadian or even non-Canadian, about terrorism and where it happens, where it's a problem, you'd probably get the stock answer of things like, well, it happens in Afghanistan, or it's a Middle East thing, or maybe parts of Africa, but certainly not Canada. Canada isn't a land that's beset by terrorism. And in all honesty, it really isn't, at least most of the time. However, it's not that Canada is completely immune from acts of terrorism. We certainly have suffered from it in the past and, and will in the future. And luckily, there's this uh, brand new book that just came out, uh, written by me, that is a history of terrorism in Canada from the very beginnings of the nation to the present day. And it's entitled The Peaceable Kingdom, A History of Terrorism in Canada from Confederation to the Present. There's details on how to order it later on in the podcast. This book is uh, rather unique, uh, as far as I can tell, in that it's not the first book to be written about terrorism in Canada. There have been other books written by both journalists and academics on, for example, Air India, the catastrophic act of terrorism in 1985, planned by Sikh terrorists in in British Columbia and Western Canada, the single greatest act of aviation terrorism in history prior to 9-11. And books written about the turbulent 1960s, the so-called October crisis of 1970, where French-speaking Quebec terrorists were setting off bombs and kidnapping people. And there have been some books written by Canadian academics as well. And those books are written from their their perspectives, either journalistic or academic. This book is very, very different. This is the first book, to my knowledge, that is written from the perspective and from the viewpoint of those that worked in security intelligence and law enforcement in counterterrorism in this country. I want to give you a little bit of a sneak peek as to what the book's about, uh, why I wrote it, and why I think it's different. The book looks at terrorism over more than 150 year span. So Canada became an independent country on July 1st, 1867. And yet the very first act of terrorism on Canadian soil occurred less than a year after Canada was founded. In April of 1868, Thomas Darcy McGee, a so-called father of confederation, was assassinated by an Irish Fenian terrorist. But you have to fast forward almost another century before you get the next act of terrorism. In the 1960s, the Front de Libération du Québec, the FLQ, was responsible for a series of bombings, largely in Montreal, to push for French language independence, for Quebec sovereignty. And this culminated in the October 1970 crisis when they kidnapped a British trade representative, James Cross, as well as a Quebec provincial minister, Pierre Laporte, they, they actually they killed the latter. James Cross actually just died last week at the age of 99. He was he was saved and he was went back to the United Kingdom. Then we went through a whole host of what I'm calling ethno-nationalist terrorism in the 1980s. Armenian terrorism. There were two Armenian terrorist attacks in Ottawa. There was, of course, the Sikh extremism I already referred to. And there were other forms of what I'm calling ethno-nationalist terrorism. That was followed by a the post-9-11 period in which counterterrorism in Canada pretty well meant countering Islamist extremism. Canadians who plot plotted acts of terrorism on our soil, and there were many foiled attacks and unfortunately a few successful ones, as well as Canadians who went abroad to join terrorist groups such as Islamic State or Al-Qaeda or Al-Shabaab in Somalia, or who were the masterminds of heinous acts of violence outside, such as Tamin Chowdhury of Windsor, Ontario, right across the river from Detroit, Michigan, who orchestrated an attack on the Holy Artisan Bakery in Dhaka, the capital of Bangladesh, on, of all days, July the 1st, Canada Day, in 2016, killing over 20 people. And of course, we've had right-wing terrorist attacks in Canada as well, the most famous of which being in 2017, when a mosque was attacked by a young man called Alexandre Bissonnette in Quebec City, in which six people were killed. The difference that this book gets at, which I think makes it quite distinct, is the fact that I was able to uh, garner, recruit, cajole dozens of my former friends and colleagues at CSIS, the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, as well as the RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, who actually worked in counterterrorism in the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, the 2000s and the 2010s, 
to share their stories with me. What it was like to work in counterterrorism. What investigations were like? What were the challenges of the investigations? What was the learning curve? What were best practices? What mistakes did they make? This, to the best of my knowledge, has never happened in Canada, where the men and women who worked at the coalface, day in, day out, over decades, trying to help keep Canada and Canadians safe, told their stories. Now, as you can probably appreciate, my sources are all anonymous. I didn't, I don't name any of my sources. And I have to be really, really careful in how much detail I provide. After all, secret is still secret. But I was able to use an awful, awful lot of open source information. Uh, some great reporting by men like Stuart Bell, formerly of the National Post, now with Global News, probably Canada's best terrorism reporter, as well as my own experiences. As I've shared with you on many occasions, I spent 32 years in security intelligence in Canada, half of that in counterterrorism. And I was also very, I don't know, fortunate's the word, that the vast majority of terrorist attacks I talk about in the book all took place on my watch. They all took place while I was working in security intelligence in Canada. The only exceptions being the assassination of Thomas Darcy McGee. I'm not that old. I may be old, but I wasn't born in, I wasn't around 1868, as well as most of the attacks in Montreal in the 1960s after the October crisis. My own career dates from the early 1980s. But all the attacks, all the foiled plots, all the individuals that sought to do bad things here and abroad, they were all people that did what they did while I worked in security intelligence, which means in many of these cases, I actually worked on them as an intelligence analyst. I had access to the information. I had access to the investigators. I had access to a whole host of things, most of which I cannot share, but I can reflect upon. Therefore, this book is a combination of a kind of an autobiography of sorts, but also the stories of the men and women who are the real heroes here. These are the intelligence officers. These are the surveillance. These are the RCMP investigators. These are the men and women who do uh, the briefing of intercepted communications under federal court warrant. This is their story. This is how they went to work every day with one task and one task only on their minds. How could they do the best possible job in stopping bad things from happening? And I think can Canadians have to recognize these men and women. They are truly outstanding Canadians. And in this book, I wanted to, rec I wanted to recognize them. I wanted to tell their story on their behalf. I think it's a riveting book, but then again, I'm biased. It's not that long, a little over 200 pages. And then you'll hear all kinds of details you probably weren't aware of before. A lot of sort of personal insights as to what counterterrorism is all about. It is the culmination for me of a whole series of things. So for those of you who have been following me, you know that this is in fact my sixth book. The first book was back in 2015, The Threat From Within, looking at radicalization, followed by Western foreign fighters, which looks at, surprise, surprise, Westerners that went to go fight for groups like ISIS, the lesser jihads, <clears throat> where ISIS and other groups will end up next, an end to the war on terrorism, how oh, I don't like the term and think we should get rid of it, and last but not least, last year's When Religion Kills, looking at different forms of terrorism beyond Islamist extremism. This, therefore, is my sixth book. It is my sixth book in six years. I can't promise you there's going to be a seventh one. I'm certainly taking a break from writing books right now, but I do think you'll you'll enjoy this one. It's, it's written in a very uh, flowing style. It, it is it, There's no academic discourse in here. In fact, I only talked to one academic in the entirety of my research for this book who happened to be a specialist in Irish terrorism in Canada in the 1860s, University of Toronto professor called David Wilson, great guy. He was on one of my, on one of my podcasts a few months back, if you, if you remember. But this is a book about practitioners. It's a book about what, what they did, to an extent how they did it, and most importantly, why they did it. I think it's a book that all Canadians should read. Again, I understand I'm being biased, but it tells an incredible story about some incredible Canadians. Why don't you pick up a copy? I should mention that I'd like to recognize in this podcast the Quebec Nordiques team that used to play in the NHL before they went off to Colorado, was it, in the early 1990s? Still remember those great games between the Quebec Nordiques and the Montreal Canadiens, the battle for Quebec? Great, great hockey. Anyhow, uh, that's a bit of an insight into my new book, The Peaceable Kingdom. Again, you can order it from my website. Details will follow in a second. But of course, as usual, I have to share with you 
the Hardy Boys Pearls of Wisdom from the Hardy Boys Guide to Life. This is taken from The Secret of Pirate's Hill. A person can't play hide and seek with the facts and expect his detectives to do a good sleuthing job for him. Wow, is this ever apt in 2021 where people are playing loose and hard with facts when it comes to describing terrorism, isn't it? Anyhow, I'd love to hear from you what you thought about this podcast and others. You can reach me on email, borealisrisk at gmail.com or on Twitter at Borealis Saves. You can also find me on LinkedIn and on Facebook. If you like this content, want to get more, go to the website, borealisthreatenrisk.com. Hit the subscribe button, provide your email address. You'll get free daily digests, all the podcasts, all the blogs, all the media interviews, free to your inbox. And most importantly, you'll also find a tab on the website where you can order the book, The Peaceable Kingdom. I just need your name, your email address, and your physical address. I am self-publishing this book, which means I am going to be responsible for distributing it. It's, it's not expensive. It's a lot cheaper than the other books I've written because, because it is being self-published. I'd love for you to buy a copy. Anyhow, I'll talk to you again soon. Until then, stay safe.